All right. How's everyone? Good. This is our last talk for the day. And uh, this, was a, this was a great WordCamp. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, but we have a great session coming up with Nyan Kim. Nyan Kim is a senior software engineer at Penske Media Corporation, where she works on leading ent entertainment publications such as Variety, Billboard, and The Hollywood Reporter. Previously, a senior lecturer at University of Southern California, Nyan has taught web development to hundreds of students from elementary school age to adult learners. She's passionate about helping newcomers break into and thrive in tech careers. Her session today is Empowering Afghan Women Through Coding, Challenges, and Opportunities. Please give a very warm welcome to Nyan Kim. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of short. Um, so I'll just hold the mic like this. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for coming to my talk. I know it's the very last one, so I know a lot of your energy levels are pretty low. And So thank you so much for coming by. I, I really expected, like, two people to show up, like my husband and my boss, and, like, that's it. But thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining me. I'm so excited to talk about... Um, Afghanistan woman, Afghan woman today. So um, again, again, as Caleb introduced, nice to meet you. My name is Nyon. It's pronounced like nylon without the L. I know it's kind of a weird spelling, but anyway, that's, that's my name. Um, I currently work as a senior software engineer at PMC. Really, really great company to work for, by the way. Caleb talked about them earlier this morning. Um, if you're ever interested, please talk to me about PMC as well. So many good, I have so many things I could share about. Uh, not too long ago, I was in the academia world. I was a professor um, at the University of Southern California, USC, um, but I decided to go back to industry. So I'm in industry, uh, working in the industry right now. Um, however, um, I'm not here to talk about any of those things today. I'm talk today I'm here to talk about Afghanistan, specifically a program, a, a coding program I got to work with women in Afghanistan. I wanted to share to you today some lessons we learned um, and maybe even get some feedback from, there's a lot of great people talking about teaching WordPress and the community here, so I would lo love to hear your input. Um, and also I, ho I hope that by sharing what we did, if you ever are in, you find yourself needing to teach non-American students WordPress or, or coding in general, I'm hoping that this can help you spark some ideas as well. So that's, um, that's kind of what my goal is for today. Um, for the safety of the students um, in this talk, I'm gonna be kind of vague. I'm, I'm purposely not going to be mentioning any individual names or organizations, um, but there's a lot of people involved in this actually. I'm just one person out of many people involved in this amazing project. Um, but I'm gonna be a little vague, so if you're like, if you put, however, if you wanna talk to me privately, I, I'm, I'll, I'll spill all the beans and tell you what's who's doing what and what, are, what we're doing, so I'm, I'm very happy to talk about all that. And also, I gotta tell you, I'm not an expert in Afghanistan. I'm not a politician, not a journalist, you know, so, um, Please don't come at me with all of your politics and what you think about the current situation there. Um, however, I do want to go over, just before I just jump into my talk, just um, really briefly about what is going on in Afghanistan and why I care and why this is important to me. Just really, really real quick. Um, again, not a, I'm not a politician, I'm not a historian, but here are just some really quick facts. Um, so for about the last four decades, Afghanistan has faced a lot of civil wars and coups. Uh, more, most recently, uh, in 1973, the monarchy was overthrown. And then in 1978, a, co a communist party led another coup that overthrew that government. And then, and then the USSR invaded you know, uh, Afghanistan in 1979, leading to even more conflict and chaos. 
So among there's there's been so, so many civil wars, famine, droughts going on in this country for many for a long long time, until nine, around 1995, 1996, the Taliban is as you've heard of in the news, they took over. Osama bin Laden became the leader, and they started they started imposing very very extreme Islamic laws such as women cannot. Uh, go to school, women cannot go to work, women have to be fully clothed, they can't go out without a male escort. Uh, a lot of human rights overall issues also have risen as well. There's public executions, just a lot of, uh, I, I, I won't go there, but a lot of, lot of things happened. And then as everyone is aware of, 9-11 happened, and that was heartbreaking, and the, ta the Taliban was involved, was involved in this and the United States then invaded Afghanistan in 2001 and, and since 2001 to 2021 uh, the U.S. has been uh, t uh, the U.S. has been in charge of the government they've started steadily bringing back more and more human and women rights and there was a slow steady progression of more women going back to school universities getting jobs however as sadly uh, uh, as you've seen in the news in August 2021, the U.S. troops left, and it was a tragic day for the Afghan, Afghan people. This was the airport where the U.S. troops were leaving, and all the Afghan people were trying to leave with them. It was such a heartbreaking news that we saw in, uh, on the news. Since then, the Taliban rose, quickly took over again, and they just this. although they originally promised they were going to be bringing back women rights and all these things, they slowly, they totally reneged on their promises. And at the, as of right now, and this are, these are a lot of recent events, as of right now, women cannot go to school after middle school. So basically in, our, in the United States standards, they can't go to high school, they can't go to college, uh, they can't hold jobs, they can't even teach. Um, most of the women that we know are pretty much stuck at home. They're not allowed to go outside. It's, it's um, not, a, I, I, I can't believe that in 2023, uh, these things are happening. Um, it's, it's, it's I, I think most of us already heard of all this on the news. And it's so heartbreaking to me that girls can't go to school. Like, that is just such a fundamental thing. Like, uh, anyway, my sister always tells me and teases me. She always makes fun of me. She says, you know, all you can do is, all you know how to do is learn how to, you, you only know how to code. You don't know, you don't know how to cook. You, like, you don't drive well. Like, you don't, like, I don't know, she's, she's like four years younger than me. She loves to roast me all the time. She's like, man, like, all you do is look at your computer all day. You're always coding. Like, well, guess what? My, <laughs> because of my coding skills, I found that I could actually help these women thanks to, thanks to coding, which is all I know how to do. <laughs> So what happened was, um, again, going to be a little vague here. I, I got some phone calls, and about uh, it was a very random phone call. And they were working with these young women in Afghanistan who really want to, uh, they want to do something while they're home. They wanted to, whatever it was, they want to get some kind of education. So, and one thing that kind of came up was maybe we can teach these girls how to code because that's something they could do at home. Uh, they could even find remote jobs. They could support themselves. They could get p potentially some income. And these are, and you know, you're just, if they're home anyway and you're just on the internet, what is the Taliban going to do about that? You know, you're <laughs> like, they're just on, on, on the internet, right? And there's so many in this, and, in, and there's so many more opportunities now. Um, so with coding technology, so that's what they're kind of talking about. And eventually that came to me and they asked me, are you interested, like, are there some good ideas we can do with these women? Can we do some kind of some kind of coding program, some kind of you know something with these women? So we said, okay, let's try it. <laughs> let's just try it and see what happens. Um, so this is this this is this ended up becoming our plan. And I gotta tell you, I again don't know very much about Afghanistan. I don't know about their culture or anything like that. But we got some cultural cultural training. We talked about what's important to the girls, and and uh, we did find out they speak English. I, that was my number one question. I was like, do they even speak English? Like they have to read code. Is code is in English, right? So, um, so we after a lot of discussions, we came up with a very just a, we just want a trial pilot course. And this is kind of what we came up with. We did a 12-week course. 
six weeks of just HTML, CSS, just so that they can un just understand some basics and learn. That's one thing I love about HTML, CSS is it's very visual too. So you just start typing things and, and things come up. So it's a very quick, you know, like very quick feedback. And then uh, they also start learning all these weird punctuation marks that they've never written before. You know, all those greater than signs, less than signs, periods, like they, and they start to learn about syntax and what debugging means. So we thought that was a good intro to start with. And then we actually moved on to Python, six weeks of Python. And the reason we chose Python was because Python is also very intro friendly language. It's very easy to get started. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, the indentations and stuff is all very, it, it, it teaches you up front how to be good with your indentation and things like that. And Python also opens up more doors, even if the students don't want to do web development, if they wanted to do, um, actually Python, you could do web development back end as well. It opens up some doors to analytics and you know machine learning and all that as well. So we just thought it would be a good kind of pair. Um, and then we did, we did do virtual live meetings. Um, Online, so no, we, we didn't go to Afghanistan. That would have been very scary. I don't think I'm that brave <laughs> yet. I don't know. Um, but so it was all, all virtual three times a week. Uh, we also had office hours outside of the regular class. We had labs, we had assignments, uh, basically a full university kind of type course, but crammed into 12 weeks. And uh, we also had TAs that were volunteer. They helped them outside. We had TAs on site as well that helped the students. And we had about 20 students. So we, just, we actually we had like 50 students sign up, but we we um, or actually we had so we had a lot of interest. But we were this is our pilot. We just wanted to keep it small, so we kept it at tw about 20 cons consistent uh, 20 consistent students. And I'm very, very big uh, from, I've been teaching web development for a long time, and I'm very, very big on very interactive stuff. So we do, do a lot of interactive uh, learning. We're, we were going to use, uh, we decided to use an online editor to first start out with. So this is, it's kind of like CodePen or JS Fiddle, if you've seen one of those. Um, so we use this program to do a lot of, uh, to, th so the students didn't have to install VS Code or anything. We just straight up use the online editors just to get started. And I, with online editors like this, you just type in the code and it shows up right away. So the students get, again, immediate feedback and they're not so afraid of like their code breaking too easily and things like that. And that's, that's uh, Mantu is actually one of a favorite street food in Afghanistan the students told me about. So we made like a little website about that. That was a little fun. Um, so that was kind of the idea going. We were going to make it very hands-on, very interactive, uh, live. We did a lot of, we're going to do live sessions, um, office hours. We had a, a number of staff getting heavily involved in, in this. So how'd it go? The first day, day one, honestly, it went really bad. Uh, well, I'm gonna, not going to lie. I mean, I, I, none of us knew what what to expect. A lot of it honestly looks something like this. Like, <laughs> um, I was like saying like, how are, like, hi everybody, how are you? You know, what, uh, what I, 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 just to do like an icebreaker, I was like, you know, what is your like favorite food or what is your favorite TV show or something like that? I think I asked them and I would get like no response and like it was just dead silence. And I, I really thought something was wrong with my end and like, I was like, oh, maybe they don't, understand or maybe my internet's bad and and um yeah just a lot it was the first thing was so so bad it was so awkward uh we quickly found out that it is actually their internet connection their internet connection i knew wasn't going to be great going in um, but their internet connection was uh, less than one mbps and uh, the online video platforms, even though they are pretty good at compressing and things like that, that was still too slow for them. So there was this like three second delay. I would be like, hello, what's, you know, what's your name? And then three seconds later, they will respond. They heard me and they would respond. And it would take probably another two seconds for their response <laughs> to come back to me. So it was very awkward. So what, we made some changes right away. Um, we decided, you know what, um, I don't need to see everybody's faces. They don't need to see my face. We're gonna save every kilobyte we can. So we turned off all the videos. Uh, only they only saw my screen share. It, that seemed to improve a lot. Um, I didn't let nobody talk. Only me. I talked at least audio-wise. 
Um, and I did not put it in here, but the students are very active in the chat, in the chat. So we use, uh, so I encourage them to use the chat a lot more. Um, so don't, if you have questions, let's not you know, waste time trying audio. Just put it in the chat. And then a, kind of a big change was instead of me live uh, talking the whole time, and because the students have a hard time listening, um, I decided to pre-record a lot of videos. Um, and the pre-recording would cover some major concepts. And I found that for some reason, YouTube works really well in Afghanistan, much better than just normal internet. So they, watching a video on YouTube was much better than watching, I don't know, like a Vimeo video or something like that. So I uploaded on YouTube. So, and I made them pr promise me, you have to watch these videos before you come to class. Um, and they were all over it. They loved it. And so they, start, so they would watch a pre-recorded video about the topic before coming to class. And then in class, we did a, we did just, I just did a lot of review and more examples. Um, in the education world, we call this like a flipped classroom model, which I have a lot of opinions on. Actually, I'm not a big fan of flip model, but uh, it actually worked for these girls because of the internet issues and all that. So it actually worked really well. Um, and we did a lot more, again, more examples, more show, more, t more tell. We, I asked the students a lot of questions about their culture, like the previous slide I showed you. I talked, I was like, what's your favorite food? Let's make a website out of your favorite food. Like what kind of, what kind of uh, TV shows do you watch? They watch actually a lot of Indian stuff. I didn't know that. So we watched like Bollywood. So we like made some Bollywood examples and, and uh, to, to keep them engaged. Some reason the chat, like the, I said, they love chatting. They're so chatty, I love it. So we would do, after I covered a major concept, Instead of just kind of moving on, I retyped it really fast in the chat. Like I summarized it really fast in the chat, pasted it in the chat, and then um, and uh, to just to recap what we just talked about, all all good things. And and last bullet, like I said, more show and more less tell, just more demonstration rather than me just talking. Ended up being being really great. Some observations. Oh my goodness, you guys, these are the best students I've ever had. <laughs> I taught a lot of uh, American college students, and after dealing with a pandemic and stuff, I was really burnt out, honestly, of teaching students. But these students were the more, some of the most motivated, most appreciated students. They told me they love me like every day. Nobody tells me that. Like, every, not even you know, not even my family tells me they love me every day like this. But they would be like, "We love you," and like you know, all these like. This is just one snippet. I, I, I wanted to show you guys all of everything, but I, I can't. So, but yeah, we love you, and like, we're so grateful. And, and they, they were so attentive, very chatty in the chat. They love you. They're so good at using emojis. Um, it's, it's not just, you know, Gen Z students in America. Like, over there, they love using emojis. They're hilarious, okay? They're hilarious. They, uh, they're so funny. We were talking about like holidays coming up. I was like, oh, you know, in America, we have like President's Day coming up or something. You know, what, what, what kind of holidays do you have in Afghanistan? Like, what are some of your favorite holidays in Afghanistan? And, and one student says, oh, every day is a holiday for us because we can't go to school or work. And I was like, oh. <laughs> right? I was like, I didn't know how to respond to that. But all the other students, they were like, all these cry laugh emojis in the chat and they were having a blast and they were like, yeah, we can't, every day is a holiday for us. And like, yeah, we can't go, we can't go outside. And like, <laughs> so anyways, so again, very hilarious. And they actually really, I mean, they really want to get to know, they really wanted to get to know me and they knew, I, they, they found out I was Korean. Um, so they were like, oh, like we love kimchi too. And like, I, it was, it's, I was like, yeah, okay. Like, and, and then, oh, we love K-pop. Like, do you know BTS, you know, stuff like that. Um, and it, it was great. And the students just, I could, like, they're so, their perspective on life really changed. They were saying how, wow, I feel like this is some, like, I have hope outside. You know, this is something I can actually do. And this, there's a lot of opportunities outside of just, I'm not locked into my, the country I live in. I can do more outside. So the, the, their, their confidence, their, their hope just boosted, which was great. Now, I just, to finish up here, I just want to show you, and they made some amazing final projects. So for our final projects, they have to make a website from scratch. They could pick the topic they want. And they, I told, they can only use HTML, CSS from scratch uh, because it is a coding class. So no WordPress or anything just yet, just everything from scratch. 
and not even bootstrap, nothing, just everything raw. And uh, they did such a beautiful job. I, I'm just going to flip through some of these. Um, and they have so many great interests that they have. And they even, one of them made their own like web developer portfolio. Amazing, amazing job. Uh, we got some great feedback as well. Uh, we had students pretty much saying they uh, out of one to ten, sixty four percent love this, uh, rated as a ten, and they want to recommend it. Blah, blah blah. They want to continue learning more. That's why we asked them if we had a second level. Would you want to learn more? They most people, most students said yes, and we got a lot. I'm not going to read all these to you, but we got a lot of really good testimo testimonials as well. Like a lot of students saying, "I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was going to be too hard, but it was actually really fun. I really loved making websites. I loved learning um, Python, and um, it was a, a really great feedback." Um, so some next steps, some next steps that we want to do are. Internet connection is huge. We are partnering with some organizations to get some better internet access for them. Internet is expensive over there, so uh, ways to provide more free and accessible internet is huge. We also want to look into what's going to be next. And my, what I really want to do is even teach them a little bit of JavaScript, PHP, and then we want to go into WordPress. And I uh, met some fantastic people here today about talking about WordPress curriculum and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to well, you know, what are some best practices to teach WordPress? Um, we're also thinking the third bullet there is, is there a path for maybe students to even learn data analytics? Because that's also another big growing area, data science, that kind of thing. I'm not a data expert, though, so I have no idea what to do with that. But if any of you happen to know anything about data, please, I'm happy to talk to you. Um, also, I, lastly, I want to get the students involved into a lot of the dev communities out here, like WordPress meetups. They, that could be online. I, the students are very, like, they love meeting people. They love, they're very good at talking and engaging. So I think that would be a great, great fit for them. So as I close, um, I've, this is, these are, when you see Afghanistan in the news, we always see, like, bombs and you know, war going on. But I learned through this program that Afghanistan is a, such a beautiful, beautiful country. These are just some high-level drone shots of the country there. It's beautiful. They have such, they're such a historic land, and they're very family-oriented, very close-knit. They have such a vibrant kind of culture. And just wanted to share just a little bit of this because it's, I think we forget when all this chaos is going on, we forget about the people. Like, the act, they're actually human beings. Most, besides the, you know, the, some of the really extreme crazy people, they're, in, on average, they're just everyday people that want to work. They want to, they have families to take care of. They have kids. They're thinking about marriage. You know, they're, they, and they just want to live. <laughs> and they just want to go to their ordinary life. What, and what saddens me the most is a lot of these students, the students I taught, there are, most of them are about 20 year olds. Year olds. They, they, th this, this is like one of those things as, a, they, as growing up, they always heard about from their parents like, oh, back when I was a kid, you know, we had all this chaos and we couldn't go to school. But they never actually, all these 20-year-olds, they never lived that kind of life before. When they were born, the U.S. was already uh, uh, took over Afghanistan, so they didn't have these kind of restrictions. Literally overnight, they, they were kicked out of school, kicked out of work. So these students are so like, what just happened? Like, I never, like this is stuff I heard from my grandparents and my parents, but now I'm living this. So anyway, so um, yeah, I, I thank you for letting me talk today, everybody. <laughs> thank you for letting me share. Thank you, uh, WordCamp Montclair for inviting me and letting me talk, talk your ear off. And um, thank you, PMC, my employer, for letting me come and talk as well. Really think great job to our um, tech staff back there, Glenn and Amanda. I think, <laughs> yay, I see them. They're also, I've never, like, this is cool. I've never, like, never experienced this kind of support. So that's, that's awesome. So thank you, everyone. Um, I have some contact info here. Feel free to reach out to me privately if you're interested at all in talking more about it. Um, I'm happy to talk to you offline about, with more information. Um, any, any questions? You mentioned keeping things vague. These yeah. girls um, self-educating and, and ha like working from home, what kind of risks are they taking? So that's a very good question. I also ask the same thing. Um, but so it, 
it's more common in the bigger cities, but it, I, the Taliban have literally, in some of the big, the uh, capital of Kabul, uh, the capital of Afghanistan is Kabul, and they, the Taliban would literally march into the university with you know, their machine guns and all that stuff and kick the girls out. And, um, and they regularly patrol the marketplace, the common areas to make sure any women are escorted with men. Um, they, I've heard that they, they randomly do do even house checks. They visit houses. But I heard that's a little bit less common now. But definitely in the more public um, places, they do, there's regular patrols that like just that are keeping, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they're just making, they're just always patrolling and making sure things are, things are going to the way they want it. So. If they're found like working from home, will they get in trouble for that? So, uh, they might. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, so that's why I want to be really, really careful. The girls keep telling me, I don't know how much I believe them, right? They're like, oh, no, they're not like, you know, Taliban's not that, like, sophisticated to know what we're really doing. And so they, and then I do have other government officials telling me the sim similar thing, but we always want to be a little bit more on the cautious side. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think there is a risk, maybe not a humongous risk. Uh, maybe if the friends start telling, like, telling the people, it might be a bigger problem. But so far, they, see, they say it's an assumable risk that they want to do, they want to learn, so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I will connect with, is this working? I will connect with you for sure about yeah. meetups. And were, did you mean your students, th those Afghan ladies to join the meetups? Yeah, uh, they're okay. so willing. Um, we had some like, the, uh, as long as it's online and a of time zone kind of works out, um, they would love to join, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hello, thank you. Um, like you just mentioned, the time zone. You, like you're in California yes. and they're in Afghanistan. Yes, that that's a long time. It is. Yeah. <laughs> how yeah. did how did that work out? I woke up very early <laughs> before work. I have we had scrum at nine thirty, so I would work. I would teach them seven thirty, nine thirty, and I jumped on scrum at nine thirty. You guys didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. it'd be like 7.30 your time and like 7.30 like our time. It was them. like 8 p.m. their time. Okay. And they prefer the night evening times when the internet bandwidth is a lot, lot, uh, not mo a lot more and less. it's less a little bit more discreet at night. So okay. they prefer the night time. Oh, cool. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Any other questions? Does the equipment to the girls get donated, or do they have access to this type of equipment? To uh... Yeah, yeah, great question. So for this pilot, at least, um, we did say that you have to have some, some kind of laptop that could run uh, the, the video conferencing and Chrome. And you know, luckily, with web development, they don't need to have like a really fancy machine. Um, so. Most most of the students, like 99% of them, use win like a Windows 7 machine actually, um, which was is fine for our very basic uses. So we did um, target those students. Uh, it does it did it does turn out that most families at least have some access to a laptop. So luckily, the hard part was actually its internet rather than the computer itself. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You said the first day was really rough. How long did it take for them to really get in a groove with you and like things start really? Yeah, great going? question. I think I think maybe I think it was like after I kind of figured out how, the way they talk and things like that. Maybe actually it was like maybe third or fourth day, it got much better. And then I think I released the pre-recorded videos the second week, and that really brought like. That made an overnight difference. So the second week was like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Any other questions? No. Nyan, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you.